Well, another episode of MBRF podcast, but this time I'm a little bit um, terrified, a little bit, just a tiny little bit, because I'm sitting across from Professor Elizabeth, Elizabeth Churchill, who is a professor in psychology, artificial intelligence, and cognitive science. Cognitive science. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, please be gentle. I'll try and be nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell us what do you do? What do I do? Yeah. So I have recently joined MBZ UAI, the AI University in Abu Dhabi, to start a new department in human computer interaction and human centered AI. And so my background was, as you said, originally psychology and then AI and cognitive science. And I've spent almost three decades in Silicon Valley in different industries, um, looking at how we build technologies for people. And so when the university approached me to think about bringing a human-centered lens to their AI university, I had to say yes, because AI is changing everybody's lives and AI is the future and how we train students and teach people and help them understand the power of AI as well as concerns around AI. Uh, we need to do that and we need to empower the next generation of leaders and the current leaders by telling them more about what AI is and can do. So um, I moved from the industry into academia, still consult with industry to try and think about what is the future of AI. I always felt it is, but I want to go. I have another question that I really want to ask. But before that, I always feel that transferring knowledge from one generation to another is probably the most divinish role we can have on this planet. If you think about it, it's it's making sure it's the most selfless job you can do as you pass knowledge on, hoping that the future that we're not part of is better than the reality that we live today. So I think that is something I owe you a thank you for first. Um, especially that you're doing it um, here in this region where there's a lot of youth, a lot of youth with a lot of hope for a great future and uh, a future they, they deserve to be very good. We all deserve a, a good future. Uh, so thank you for that. The second part, why is the question that I wanted to ask, why is AI, I met three, four people today, AI is running hand in hand with psychology. What's the relationship? Well, the relationship goes back a long way and it's a relationship of philosophy as well as technology. So the idea that we could create computational technologies that think like humans that are inspired by how we reason and we do cognition and we sense the world and we communicate, that is baked into the very philosophy of the origins of AI as a discipline. Now, where does psychology come in now? Well, at many, many levels. I like to say that there are three ways to think about designing in, and AI, and they're all psychology if you think about them. The first is, designing AI itself. What are the AI tools, techniques, and platforms that exist? How do they get designed? How do we choose what they can and can't do? How do we understand agency and autonomy? The second kind of AI design thinking for me is designing with AI. What are the interfaces and the interactions? And how do we design the interfaces to AI? How do we design the next iteration, for example, healthcare applications that have AI baked into them, that are learning from not just individuals, but whole groups of cohorts of people? How do we design for AI? So imagine a very smart system wants to communicate better with us. Like how do we design a communication between us and the AI systems and subsystems and super systems? What are the interfaces? Are they, is it voice? Is it gesture? Is it multimodal? 
Um, imagine these AI systems are desperate to tell us what they're up to. How do we help them tell us? And I like to think of that as a sort of real deep conversation design and the psychology of how we reason as humans, if you like, the psychology of how the AI systems reason. Prompt engineering is just the beginning and it's something that we don't even know how to do very well. Humans don't do particularly well. That's why we have to be trained to do it. What's beyond prompt engineering so we can communicate with our AI systems, platforms and tools? So psychology is everywhere. And as a psychologist originally, I'm happy that you brought that out. Pops another question in my head. I think, I don't want to say flaws because the creator created a perfect product. Well, we're not so perfect, I mean, but, but, but there are flaws in the human psychology. There are, there are wormholes, <laughs> yes. true? There, true. Are, there are back entrances, right? If you look at how we're designed, um, the more we know about the human body, and we don't know everything, obviously, it's, it's still way too ambiguous. But the more we know, the more back doors we find into the human brain. Do you agree? Absolutely, yes. I mean, once we learn that dopamine makes us happy <laughs> and we figured out a way to get more dopamine kick in, um, um, we figured that gambling does that and the reward system and all of that stuff. Having psychologists work on AI can be a little bit scary, can it? Because <laughs> you know the back doors. I think AI, you know, different AI systems are all very different, obviously. Um, and it is clear that a lot of AI tools are biased and they have inherited the human biases because of the data that are tr being trained on, right? So know that systems are biased. We also know that a lot of our systems, AI systems, are very clever. They're solving problems that we didn't know that they were going to be able to solve. So again, back to that communicating with AI systems. How do we have some kind of visibility into what the reasoning processes were, what the provenance was of any decision that is made? What is the transparency? What is beyond that black box? And how do we surface and understand just as you and I can sit and I can have a conversation with you and say, you know, I think that was a bias that you just expressed there. What do you think we have a dialogue about that? Do you think that's really true or not? We dialogue. So how do we start to dialogue and scaffold different ways of reasoning? So the back doors, if you like, exist, but in human-human communication, we reason with each other. So I like to think of AI systems, which also have these back doors, as if they are transparent and we can have reflection of some kind, we can course correct. And I think joy of finding out what those back doors are. What are those biases in reasoning? What are those things that give us dopamine highs or lows? How do we course correct and regulate and self-regulate and societally have governance to regulate? These are important questions and it's sociology as well as psychology. It's political science as well. And I think, you know, a lot of our conversations around AI right now are surfacing for us. AI agents are part of the reasoning ecosystem. They are not separate from, they are part of our reasoning ecosystem. I'll give you a concrete example. So if you have an expert who looks at something that comes out from an AI tool and goes, I don't know that I trust that because I'm a real expert on this and this just doesn't seem quite right to me. What's that expert's going to do is go and gather other forms of evidence and then feedback potentially into the AI system. Actually, that was incorrect rationale and reasoning. And here we need to course correct. So it's a loop of learning and it's a human AI loop of learning both directions. It's bi-directional. So my greatest fear is that people trust AI systems and don't understand that they're in dialogue. Because I got to tell you, Elizabeth is really good because she read my next question. I swear to you, it was, what is your biggest fears? I think overly trusting, but the opposite side of that also, over, over so that people go, AI is monolithically difficult. No, 
AI and all of the different kinds of AI that sit under that giant banner are tools for us to use and shape, evaluate and iterate. Not engaging with that mindset is a problem to me. Trusting and believing because an AI said it, it must be smart. So extremes are a problem. Extremes. Let's remain in the middle. Yes, yes, absolutely. Professor, it's an absolute pleasure to speak with you. I can do this for hours. It's a shorter podcast, but I would love to host a longer podcast because I think there's a lot that you can add to this dialogue. And I, once again, I want to thank you for transferring knowledge um, for the next generations. Thank and you. I know it's in safe hands. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the conversation. Look forward to chatting more. Thank you, Professor.